Okay, I want to look at something a little bit different today and go over the value for the dilogarithm of one half. And before we do it, let's kind of go over some of the definitions that we have over here to the right. So first, up top here, we've got the series definition for the dilogarithm. For this, for our problem, we're going to have our z value in this formula is going to be this one half. So if we just plug a one half in there, we could actually just look at this as the sum from one to infinity of one half to the n over n squared, but I could actually write it like one over two to the n over n squared. And this is actually a problem I did recently, so there's another video on this if you wanna look at this starting from a series perspective. But for this video, I'm gonna be more interested in the integral definitions that we have down here. Now for the broader definition of the poly logarithm, we could look at this one right here, where instead of having, so like for the di logarithm, we're squaring the n in the denominator. But over here, we've got this s value that's going to be the exponent on the n. You can think about this like if you had the poly logarithm of 1, then this thing's actually just going to be the Riemann zeta function, right? 1 over n to the s. Now, since I already have a video starting with this series definition, getting to these integral definitions, I think I'm going to use, I think I want to use this second one to set up the integral. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in 1 half and do this integral down here. You'll notice when z is one half, this here is still gonna be one half. So what we're gonna have is for li2, one half. This is gonna be the same thing as the integral from one to one half of ln x over one minus x dx. And so to calculate the value of the di logarithm of one half, I just wanna solve this integral right here. Now you notice we've got the bounds kind of reversed. We could just multiply by a minus sign and flip it, but I think I'm gonna leave that off and just go to a u substitution. Because when I do the u substitution, then we can flip the bounds later. So for this u substitution, let's do u equal to minus ln x. And then rearranging for x, we're gonna have just x is gonna be equal to e to the minus u. Then I'll take a derivative to get our dx value. dx is gonna be minus e minus u du. So then next, let's go ahead and substitute. Plugging in 1 half here, you're gonna have minus ln 1 half. I can use the minus sign to flip it, and this upper bound becomes ln 2. Then plug in one, ln one zero, so our lower bound now is zero. That's kind of why I skipped flipping it, because I knew this would flip it for us. Then for ln x, that's just gonna be minus u. One minus x is gonna be one minus e minus u, and then we have all this stuff, minus e minus u du. But then here, minus times minus is gonna be a plus, so let's get rid of that. And then I'm just gonna reorder this slightly just to kind of set this up. But then what you'll notice is what we have right here this is perfectly set up for our geometric series formula, but with the e minus u in the numerator, it's gonna be like the geometric series starting at one instead of zero. For our geometric series, we have this formula over here to the right, and then just to get it more in this form, we wanna multiply n by an x on both sides. So if I do it on the left side, this becomes x to the n plus one. But to re-index this, if I subtract one from n here, I just need to add one here. So that's gonna allow me to get rid of this and turn this into a one. But now with this, we've got an expression, like our problem over here. So just to kind of make it clear what we're doing, instead for instead of inputting an x, we're gonna have e minus u to the n that we're just inputting into this. And so then on the right side, it's gonna be e minus u, one minus e minus u, which is exactly what we have in the integral. And for this to converge, we need e minus u, or the absolute value e minus u to be less than one. But just notice with our bounds here from zero to ln two, all these values here are gonna be less than one, so we're gonna be fine with the convergence. So what that's gonna let me do is take what we have in the blue triangle and replace it with this stuff right here. But then from here, let's just take this U here and distribute it into this. Also with exponent properties, I can distribute this N in. So let's see what that looks like when we rewrite this. So we have the integral from zero to ln two. We have the sum from one to infinity. And then this is gonna look like U e to the minus u n du but then let's swap the integral with the sum i can do it because we found our we have our absolute convergence over here but now at this point this integral is not going to be too hard it's just going to be integration by parts just normal methods let's do the di method on this just to do this integral really quick now for the integration by parts i want to differentiate u because that's going to differentiate the zero this is also going to be no problem so then differentiating u we just get a one Differentiate one more time, this is gonna be zero. Integral of e minus u n is gonna be e minus u. N's just a constant, so we're gonna have a minus one over n come out. Do it again, we're gonna have e minus u n 
minus one over n again times this is gonna become a plus one over n squared. So then this last row's got a zero in it, so that's gonna zero at the integral. We just need to evaluate these diagonals. They both have a minus sign in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the minus all the way out front, all the way in front of the sum. That's just a constant like minus one. So we have the sum from one to infinity. And then I'll factor out, we have this in common. Actually, I guess we could do, should I do e to minus u over n? Let's take that, let's take all the, everything in common. So we'll have e minus u n over n factored out. And then because we already factored out the minus, this is just gonna leave me with u, and then this is just gonna become plus one over n. And we just need to evaluate this from zero to ln two. So now first let's evaluate ln two, but I think it's a little tricky just seeing how this is gonna work with the exponent properties on e minus u n. So maybe let's just look at that piece separately and see how that goes. So we're, we're gonna have, so for e minus u n, I could put that in the denominator, right? as one over e to the u n, just to make it simpler. But we're plugging ln two for u, so this is gonna actually be one e ln two to the n. What I can do is write it like this, but e ln two is the same thing as two. So I can write this as one over two to the n, or I could write it as one half all to the n. So let's use this second way, just because I think it's gonna be nice in the series probably. So I'll write it as one half to the n over n, then our u, again, this is gonna be ln two, and this is just gonna be one over n. And then for the second part, you plug a one, this is just a zero. So this is all gonna become one over n. This just gets zeroed out times one over n here. And this is all inside the sum. And now let me just clean up the board. Let's see if we can simplify this big sum here. Now from here, what I wanna do is let's just distribute everything out. You'll notice this is gonna turn into three different sums. When I distribute this in, we'll have another sum here. So we can just evaluate these separately. They're all gonna have absolute convergence, so we're not worried about that part. I think what I'll do, now this is just one over n squared here, and minus times minus is plus. So just reordering it, this first sum I wanna look at, we're going n equals one to infinity, and this is just gonna be one over n squared. Now the second one, I'll have this, we'll distribute in the ln two to this part, but ln two, this is just a constant, so I'm gonna bring this out front of this second sum, and then for this one, we just have sum from one to infinity, half n over n. And then for the third one, we just wanna bring this one over n into it, so we'll have minus the sum from one to infinity, multiplying the one over n times this, this is gonna become half to the n over n squared. And then at this point, we've got three pretty easy sums. This one is a really well-known value. This is the Basel problem. This is gonna be the same thing as pi squared over six. It's also the Riemann zeta function of two. So we know what this is. This right here, well, going back to our definition, if you just think of this as the input, if this is the z, this right here is the dialogarithm of one half that we wanna find. We've kind, of redo, we've kind of reintroduced it into the problem. So we don't know what this is yet. This is what we're trying to find, but we can at least we can at least recognize it and then know that we need to solve for this value right here. And then this piece right here, this is our definition for, or almost our definition for the power series for natural log one minus X. And actually really what I want is, yeah, let's just look at that. So if we have natural log one minus X, this is gonna be the same thing as the sum from one to infinity of X to the N over N. And sorry, what I'm forgetting is the minus sign out front. But in order to get to look this way, all I need to do is let's just change the sign here and multiply the minus sign in here. So that way this piece right here, I can say this is the same thing as natural log of one minus one half with our input being the one half right here. But of course I can simplify this and just write this as natural log one half. And now let's just see if we can pull this all together. Back to our goal, we're looking for the dialogarithm of one half, and we're saying it's equal to all this stuff, which is pi squared over six plus ln two times ln one half minus dialogarithm of one half. But now to clean this up, if I just add the dialogarithm one half on both sides, then over here on the left side, we just have two copies of this, and this cancels out. Now over here, if I flip this one half, I can flip this and turn it into a two, but in order to do that, I just need to bring a minus sign out front. And then in order to get back to our goal, let's just divide by two on both sides. And ln two times ln two, we can combine these and write this as ln two all squared. And so putting this all together for my final solution, we have just pi squared over 12 minus one half natural log two all squared, and that's it. 
Okay, there you go. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you want to just kind of get straight to this value, the reflection formula I think is the way to go, especially for one half, because it's really easy to calculate. For the reflection formula, what you have is it's just going to be di logarithm z plus di logarithm 1 minus z, and this is going to equal pi squared over 6 minus ln z ln 1 minus z. So I'll leave it to you to work this out, or you can watch the other video. I'll give you a link in the description where I calculated it out using the reflection formula. But you can see pretty quick when you plug in a half, both these are one half, and you get the basic format here where this is gonna go right to, when you divide this by two after putting these together, you go right to the solution. So this way, so this way is really a quick way to do it if you just wanna to get to this solution. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.